So hello, today is July 1st and I can't believe we are in the second half of the year because I feel that I'm still in 2020 for some reason. My brain is not keeping up with the times. But we welcome all of you today for a big challenge that we have. We're going to be talking today about nutrition and, we're going, and we have with us two awesome dietitians from uh, Rockland, from our area, Rockland and Westchester, and uh, we're challenging them to actually prepare, or we challenged them to actually prepare a meal that is quick and simple that you can do in less than 10 minutes and is very healthy. And the reason why we're doing that is because a lot of people think that cooking healthy is very complicated and you have to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. And especially if you're cooking, you know, from zero and using lots of raw foods and stuff, it's gonna take longer. Well, maybe we can demonstrate that that's not the case. And Jenna and Elisa are here to help us do that. And, but first we're gonna give them an opportunity to introduce themselves. You know who I am, I'm Sandra Arevalo, I'm the Director of Patient and Community Education at Montefiore Nyack Hospital. And it's a pleasure to be with you and our attendees today. So Jenna, you're on my left here on the screen. So let's start with you. So just brag about yourself, go ahead. Hi, thanks Sandra. So I'm Jenna Lebowicz. I'm a registered dietitian and culinary nutritionist in White Plains, New York. Um, I teach cooking and nutrition for all ages, families and individuals. Um, I started out primarily teaching cooking classes um, that now combine um, cooking education with my nutrition counseling. So I work individually um, or with families on how to plan healthy meals, how to learn how to cook new foods and um, use ingredients that they may not be familiar with, and how to not just, not just tell people to make changes to their diet, but learn how to actually implement them in the kitchen. So that's me. Great, and I have to say that um, because I had the opportunity to work with Jenna in the past, a lot of my cooking tips come from her too, like in my own kitchen. So I know we're in good hands today. Alyssa, thank you for being here. Hi, thanks, Sandra. It's Alisa. Um, like Lisa with an E at the beginning. Elisa. It's phonetic. You would probably normally pronounce it that way. But anyway, um, I, I do a lot of the same things that Jenna does. In fact, I can boast about Jenna also because I've worked in, with her in, you know, a lot of different that projects and what have you. We both started together at Cornell Cooperative Extension. So um, I'm pleased that she's here also. I work for Westchester ARC and um, the same thing. I do cook, kind of cooking and nutrition because it's not healthy unless you eat it, right? <laughs> and you can't eat it unless you make it. Um, and I also consult for the Pleasantville Cottage School, which is an adolescent um, treatment facility and school. So um, I guess that's what I have to say. I have a passion for food justice. I want to make sure that everyone has access to healthy food. And my famous line that everyone knows me for is make half your plate vegetables. I'm always pushing the vegetables. Mm -hmm. And you know what is interesting how we as dietitians and I including myself, so I'm a dietitian too. So we always say make your make half your plate vegetables. And then I've come to realize that a lot of people don't eat that much vegetables, like half a plate could be a lot for a lot of people. But here is a trick. It's like if you include vegetables in your recipes. You know, you don't really have to look at a half a plate to be eating half a plate. So I think that that's one of the things that we're going to do today. And, and Elisa, now that you're mentioning lines, mine is, it's not about food, it's about recipe. And I learned that because, you know, for example, I used to hate the spinach because my mom makes the most disgusting cream of the spinach. Like I could never eat that. And then I started having spinach in my salads with pasta, with you know many different uh, recipes, and I love spinach now, but not my mom's soup. So 
that's why, you know, I always say it's not about food, it's about recipe. So let's get it started. Who wants to start first, Jenna or Elisa? Okay, Elisa, so you're gonna start and um, Elisa is gonna be showing us a video of the recipe she made. You're doing the video, right? Oh, you are. Do you have it ready? Oh, no, start with Jenna then. Okay, so we start with Jenna. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to take away my. Everybody see that okay? Nice. Yes. All right, why isn't it playing? Huh. Okay, hold on. Should be playing. Why isn't it playing? Hang on a second. Technical difficulties, please stand by. Let me see if I can play this. Okay. Hi, I'm Jenna Levelich. I'm a registered Okay, now let's try it with a share. I can get it to start on my side. I'm just not getting it to play. Now let's try this. And my my plate recipe that I'm going to make for you today is a Middle Eastern style chopped vegetable salad. Um, this is a great summer dish if you think about the Middle East, hot climates, right? So we want um, lots of fruits and vegetables that are going to be full of water, very hydrating um, in hot climates. This is actually a breakfast that in the Middle East is very often even eaten for breakfast as the start of the day, but you can enjoy this for any part of the day with any meal. Hold on, this does not seem to be working right. We're actually making this as a my plate recipe and making sure we include all of our food groups. So we're going to be using cucumber, tomato, scallion, and bell pepper as a vegetable portion. Um, our protein is going to be chickpeas. You could really use any other bean in this recipe. And my grain today is going to be some cooked quinoa. You could use couscous, you could use uh, brown rice, whatever cold cooked grain you have at hand that you might want to use. Um, so let's get started with this recipe. I already have some cucumber cut up, but we're going to cut up a little bit more for demo today. Um, you can see that I'm using an English cucumber, one of the long skinny hothouse cucumbers. Um, these usually come in the supermarket wrapped in plastic, and you want to make sure that you unwrap that and still give it a wash. The nice thing about using these cucumbers is that they are seedless, or they actually have very few seeds in the middle. And because of their nice thin skin and the way that they're treated in the supermarket, they uh, are very good for, for eating the skins. The skins are a great source of fiber and vitamins. Uh, but if you're using a regular supermarket cucumber, which you absolutely can do, just a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, that may have a very waxy coating on the outside. So you're going to want to wash that really well and probably peel that off with a vegetable peeler. Um, the other thing to note if you're using a regular cucumber is that it's going to be very seedy inside. Um, you're going to have that wet, pulpy, you know, chewy seed center. So what I always recommend for people is you take a teaspoon and use that to scrape out the seeds in the center. And by doing that, you will get rid of that wetness that would otherwise make your salad soggy. And then you just chop up the rest of the cucumber to put in your salad. So we're going to do this into some uh, thin sticks here. And then just cut it back the other way into a nice dice. And we're going to add that to the rest of the cucumbers in my bowl. We can finish that part later. So that's our cucumber. Um, the next vegetable that we're going to add in here is our bell pepper. So when I make this recipe for a large group of people, I would actually use three peppers. Uh, that's my standard in this recipe. Today I'm just using one for the demonstration. Um, I like to use a mix of brightly colored bell peppers. Um, any color that you like, anything you find in the store is great. Um, I'm not a fan of green pepper um, because I find them to be kind of grassy and tart. Um, so I usually stick with, you know, a yellow or a red or an orange. Um, when you are getting your pepper ready, cut it straight through the middle. If you can, take off most of the stem, just cut it through the stem. And then the easiest thing to do is to just grab your fingers 
right in that core with the stem piece at the bottom. And pop that right out as one piece. And then you can get all the rest of your seeds and any membrane out with that. And I always tell people, especially if you're working with kids, teaching them how to do, um, how to work safely with a knife, I just like to tell people to hold your pepper like it's a handle. Um, that way your fingers stay curled and out of the way. And you can cut your strips of the pepper. Just rolling your fingers back as you go. Just like that. And then we will dice that up and add it to the bowl. Just turn that the other way. Do a few at a time, but don't overdo it. Don't do more than you're comfortable with at any one time. One of the things I love about this salad is how colorful it is. Um, you know, if you were using a yellow and an orange pepper with the green cucumber and then the red tomatoes, it's gonna be really bright and colorful in the summer. Um, you can add some baby spinach to it if you wanted to, get another uh, layer of green in there, what, really whatever you like. So here's our pepper. Um, I've got scallions that I'm going to put in here. So I've already trimmed the ends of these scallions just to make things a little easier for myself. Um, just make sure that you're taking off the roots, but leaving most of that white section. That We want that. That's flavor. Um, so I'm just going to slice these up pretty thinly. And I use both the white and light green and even into some of the dark green part. Um, I usually stop if it looks a little bit floppy, but otherwise, as long as the dark green part is still feeling crisp and firm, I will continue to use that um, in raw dishes. Um, you could absolutely swap out a red onion in here. You could use a um, chopped white onion. You could use chives if that's what you have. You could also feel free to skip the onion piece if that's not something you enjoy. Um, I use a bench scraper. This is used in baking a lot, like a broom and a dustpan to help me pick up my ingredients as I go. That's my scallion. Um, the next ingredient we're going to add into our salad are tomatoes. So I like to use um, some Greek tomatoes for this because they have a nice firm outside. Um, but absolutely, you could dice up a regular tomato. Um, but just like with the cucumber, I'm going to recommend that after you cut the tomato in half, you take a teaspoon scoop out all the gloppy seeds inside so again you don't have all of that gooey wet seediness adding into your salad. Um, another tip when you're working with tomatoes is to switch from your chef's knife to a serrated knife. So this is a utility knife that looks like a little mini bread knife with the little teeth on it and when you're cutting things with very tender fine skins like tomatoes the utility knife with the serrated teeth will actually go through your tomato much more nicely and without ripping it apart and causing a lot of mess. And also, unlike using a chef's knife, it's not going to squish it as you use downward pressure. So as you can see, I'm just letting the teeth of the knife slide right through the skins. So it just kind of rips it right open. Um, and we're going to just add these. And so I'm cutting these in quarters just so the pieces are about the same size as my cucumbers and my peppers, but you could, you know, just cut them in half or uh, whatever you like for your salad. So I'm going to put that in the bowl and I'm going to add in the rest of my diced tomatoes. And you can already see how colorful that looks. So the next thing that I'm going to do is put in my chickpeas. So I took one can of regular good old supermarket garbanzo beans or chickpeas. So obviously this is Mediterranean salad. Chickpeas are very common in Mediterranean cuisines, Middle Eastern cuisines. So that's why I've chosen this. Um, but you could actually feel free to substitute any bean. Um, as I said, this is making it a complete my plate balanced meal. Um, you know, this is the protein, the primary protein in this recipe. Um, you could make it without the beans and have this salad and serve it alongside a cooked protein. Um, it's great with grilled chicken, um, a piece of fish, it would really be nice and refreshing in summer months. So this can of beans has been rinsed and drained really well. Again, we don't want to add all that extra moisture to the salad. So you can see it's 
really pretty dry. I'm just gonna pop that right in there. Okay. I'm gonna add the quinoa last so that it doesn't get too soggy with my dressing. Um, like I said, this is about a cup of cooked quinoa and this is mixed color quinoa. So this is red and white that I've cooked together. Um, I had this in my fridge, leftover from another meal, and it's a good way to use up leftovers. Um, but as I said, it could have been cooked couscous or barley or brown rice, whatever you like. Um, but the main thing to remember here is you want something that's, been, that's cold. Um, if it's hot, it's going to wilt everything in your salad. It's also going to soak up a lot of your dressing if it's still really hot. Um, so you want cold so that it's kind of um, gelled a little bit on the outside, gotten a little bit crunchier on the outside, and that way it won't get as soggy when it goes into your dressing. Um, but like I said, we're going to leave that till the end. So we're going to make our dressing. And the dressing for this salad is very, very simple. It is lemon juice and minced garlic and olive oil. Right, so pretty much the staples of Mediterranean cooking. Um, quick tip when you are going to be juicing the lemon, take your lemon out and make sure you wash it first. And then um, the way to make sure that you get a lot of juice out of that lemon is to kind of push down and roll with some downward pressure on your work surface. What that's going to do is to start to break up the cells of the lemon inside, those little um, the pith inside, and help to release a lot of the juice. So I've already had the lemon. I've already actually have some of the juice in here. So one lemon, one large lemon, is usually about two to three tablespoons of lemon juice. And one large lemon should be good for a salad this size. Um, you could even do a little bit more if you wanted. It really depends on how lemony you like your dressing. So I'm gonna tell you that this was three quarters of a lemon and I had about two and a half tablespoons of juice, so that's pretty good. Okay. So I have one clove of minced garlic in here. Um, if you want to think about another way to get that garlic into very fine pieces without mincing it, um, if you have a fine grater, a microplane grater, um, you can always use that to grate your garlic clove and you'll get very fine pieces. You could also use a garlic press if that works for you as well. Um, if you didn't have fresh garlic and you wanted to use garlic powder, you would probably use about a half teaspoon of garlic powder to be the equivalent of one teaspoon or one average clove of garlic. So here we've got our two tablespoons of lemon juice and our clove of garlic. And when I make a dressing, um, I usually do a ratio of either one to two parts of the liquid to two to three parts of the oil. So in this case, because we had two tablespoons of the lemon juice, I'm going to use about three tablespoons of the olive oil. There we go. And the trick for making a really nice vinaigrette and not having it separate on you is to start whisking and to slowly whisk in your oil. Don't just dump it in there because as you whisk, you are breaking up all those oil molecules and emulsifying them in with your lemon juice and your garlic. So as you can see, I'm getting a really nice consistent color. I'm not getting any blobs of oil floating around the edges there. There we go. It's really nice. It's like a nice sunshiny yellow color. Get all of that in. Great. Okay, and I don't have a slick of olive oil sitting on the top, which is really important, right? We want it really well combined. So I'm going to add to that pinch of salt and a little bit of black pepper. You can use as much or as little as you like. Do that to your own taste. And the other important thing to know is when we say do it to taste, we literally mean 
to taste. So take a piece of one of your veggies and taste your dressing. Make sure that it's flavored the way that you like it. So if you decide that you want a little bit more garlic, add it in, a little bit more lemon, add it in, whatever's going to work for you. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and just pour the dressing right over our salad. And a couple other things that I'm gonna add in here. So here's our quinoa. So now we've made sure we have all of our groups in that salad. I happen to have some leftover fresh parsley from another recipe, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss that chopped parsley in there. Again, give it a little color. Um, if you wanted to, like I said, use some um, torn up baby spinach, that could be great in here as well. Um, another variation, actually, I just thought of as an alternative to the grain, um, there's a Middle Eastern salad called fetouche, which is exactly the same thing, except instead of using the rice or the quinoa, they actually use torn up pieces of leftover stale pita bread, um, which gets mixed in with all the dressing. So that's another way to get your grain component mixed in here as well. Um, so we have everything mixed together. You can see this is our, oops, we lost a chickpea. A beautiful, colorful salad here with all the parts of my plate. Um, and one other little hint is if you wanted to add any other seasoning that you like, you could feel free. Um, so if you've had some oregano, some basil could go in here. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of a dried spice mix called za'atar, which is a Middle Eastern spice mix. I'm going to put a little sprinkling of that in, it's something that my family enjoys. Um, Italian seasoning blend would work really well in here. So anything that's going to give it the kick that you enjoy. And if you like spicy and you want to put your pepper flakes in there or um, a shot of hot sauce, whatever you like, you can make it something that you enjoy. So here is our nice, fresh, colorful, seasonal, summer, Middle Eastern salad. Enjoy. That looks so good, Jenna. I'm actually hungry right now. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I need to go downstairs and get a salad like that. And it made a nice big bowl of it and my family has been eating it for a couple of days. So it holds oh, up really wow. well. Okay. You should have called me, I will come right over, no problem. And you know what I was thinking, of course, as a Latina, I was thinking about the Latino twist in there. And when I saw you put the parsley in, I thought, oh my God, some cilantro and avocado in there will mm -hmm. make it like so good as well. Really switch black beans for the, the chickpeas, no mm -hmm. problem. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about how your recipe makes my plate. And so that our attendees know, you know, when we talk about my plate, we're referring up to a plate that is half fruits and vegetables, and then a quarter protein and a quarter starch. And hopefully that starch is some whole grains or some, you know, whole wheat bread or pasta or, you know, whatever grain that is hopefully healthier than just white bread, rice, and pasta. So um, with that in mind, Jenna, what were the ingredients in your recipe that belong in each group? Sure. So the peppers, cucumbers, and tomatoes, and I guess you could also put the parsley in there as well, and the scallions were our vegetable section. Our chickpeas were our protein. Now it's a little confusing, right? Because chickpeas are vegetable. Um, so in some plates, we might be considering our beans or peas as vegetables, but in this case, I was using them as my, my protein, my meat equivalent. And then we had the quinoa as our whole grain component. And I think what's, I don't know if you're going to talk about, you know, relative ratios on the plate, but, you know, Sandra, as you were saying before, the vegetables need to be half of that plate, which means that it's a quarter grain and a quarter protein. Well, if you think about the relative amount of chopped vegetables in that bowl, and then the smaller amount of the beans and the smaller amount of the quinoa, that represented that same ratio. Um, and then the other piece that we tend to think about is with when we think about my plate is also making sure that there's some healthy fat in there. And in my case, that was the olive oil that we used in the dressing. 
Right, and, and talking a little bit more about the greens, because the greens could also be in the green section, right? So they're like, they have multiple roles here, actually. Right, so, and I chose quinoa, so I was using it to fill the grain section, but quinoa is actually a high protein grain option. Mm -hmm. So it is actually adding to some of the overall protein in this meal, which means that this actually could be a standalone complete meal. It was a complete vegetarian dish. Um, whereas if I had taken out the grain and the beans and just made this as a vegetable salad, I would have served this on a plate where there was also another protein component, whether it was animal protein or a vegetable based protein and a separate grain. And I think that that's important to, to tell our audience, you know, usually when we think protein, we think meats and we don't necessarily need to have meat for protein. So the grains can fulfill that role very easily and they might be oftentimes a lot healthier. Agreed, absolutely. Okay. Um, any other tips that uh, you shared great tips with us, like I about the tomatoes and the cucumbers and how to cut the different vegetables, you know, like those were great. Any other tips that you have that you would like to share with us or you want a little time to think about it while we go to Elisa? Um, no, I think I think I put a lot of details in there. So mm -hmm. I, I think I hit most of them. Um, just to have fun with it. Um, and, and don't worry about it being perfect. Um, yes, you can find written recipes for this type of salad, um, but I don't use a written recipe for it because I've made it a few times, but I also make it based on what I have in my refrigerator. Um, and like I said, my written recipe has three peppers in it. Well, I only had one pepper when I was mm -hmm. filming this, so that's what I used and I used more cucumber. Um, so don't worry about it being perfect. Um, it's more important that it's something that you're going to like and that you and whoever else you're sharing it with is going to enjoy eating. Mm -hmm. um, because as you said before, Sandra, right, there's no bad vegetable, there's no bad food, there's just bad recipes. Um, if you don't like what you're eating, you, you could suffer through it and convince yourself that it's good for you. But, you know, food is meant to be enjoyed. Yeah. And, um, you know, don't, don't, force yourself to eat something mm -hmm. that you don't like. So make it the way you like it. Yeah. Because you can also be looking at the peppers and maybe you don't like peppers, so you could switch to carrots or something else. Like that's yeah. what I love about salads. My mom always says, okay, you're in charge of the salad because you make good salads. And I'm really just creative because I do exactly what you just said. Whatever I have, that's what I use. It's like my, you know, like my leftovers kind of, um, dish and you create all types of combinations and the good thing is for example that dressing that you made it's delicious and oftentimes people are right vegetables don't have too much of a taste so whatever dressing you use it's really what's gonna make your salad you know right. go to a different level right and it's and i think what's important to just add on to that is dressing is a way to add flavor and interest to your salad but it should be an accent. It shouldn't be the main component of your salad. You know, mm -hmm. it's not about having a whole bunch of blue cheese dressing and a little bit of lettuce. It's about having the vegetables and then using dressing in a small amount to add flavor, mm -hmm. um, especially because dressings can be, um, especially if you buy them commercially, not always the healthiest. They can be you know, a lot of added fats or a lot of added sugars when they're commercially processed. So, you know, making something that's really simple, olive oil and lemon juice or olive oil and vinegar with a little bit of seasoning, some garlic, whatever you have, just keep it really simple. Um, something that you like and using it in small amounts. You shouldn't see a puddle of dressing in the bottom of a salad. Mm -hmm. bowl. There should only be enough to just moisten the ingredients. Um, you never want to see like you know, a swamp in the bottom of the bowl. And you know, there are so many different vinegars out there. Mm. Do you do you know how to choose what for which? Uh, that's, sure. I mean, I usually just go for balsamic because I just like the taste. But honestly, I don't know what to use when. Would you know? So 
one thing to think about is the flavor profile that you want for that recipe and where that vinegar comes from. So if I'm doing something where I want to use basil, oregano, sort of more Italian Mediterranean seasonings, absolutely, I'll go for a balsamic vinegar or a red wine. If I want things to be a little bit more on the sort of like the Greek and Turkish side, I'll use a red wine vinegar. Um, if I'm working with sweeter fruits and vegetables, um, for example, I make a sweet potato and black bean salad. Sweet potatoes have a sweetness to them, so I don't want something that's going to be a sweeter vinegar like a balsamic, so I'll use an apple cider vinegar for that, something that's very crisp. Um, and then if I'm doing something that has a little bit more of an Asian style to it, I'll use a rice wine vinegar for that. Um, so taste the vinegar and kind of see what it reminds you of. The other trick to think about is if you've been to a restaurant and enjoyed a salad and it said that it has balsamic vinegar or white wine vinegar or raspberry vinegar, whatever it is, think about things that you've had that it's been mixed, matched with and you can try to replicate that at home. That's um, a good tip. Yeah, and then the other thing is sometimes people, you know, you get like gift boxes or gift ba you know, baskets and it has like a fancy raspberry vinegar in it. So like, what do I do with it? Well, fruit goes with fruit. So don't be afraid, for example, if it's like a citrusy olive oil or raspberry vinegar, like put it on a salad that has some fruit in it. Um, you know, and like I said, sweeter with sweeter things um, or sweet with very salty, you know, kind of play with it. But, you know, have fun with it. Okay, thank you, Jenna. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we're back to you, Lisa. Do you have um, your video. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, we can see you. It's fine. I think I just turned it off. Okay. Is the video on or off? There we go. I was just laughing because I just brought these flavored vinegars that I had. <laughs> Wait, it, does it say amaretto cherry in there? Oh, wow. I never heard of it, but it's Amarena cherry. Oh, Amarena. I was like, Amaretto. I was like, what? I don't know. All right, I'll save it for you, Sandra. Okay. All right, so can I show my video now? Yes, yep. please. So if you just click share screen. Hold on. Screen. Share. I'll make it bigger. Is there a sound with it? Because we can't, uh, I'm not listening. I'm oh, not you can hear it? hear it? No. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Why isn't it working? Um, maybe I need to mute me? No, so go into the little up arrow next to the microphone. And when you click on your, um, go to the bottom where it says audio settings. And then you have the output volume and bring it to the highest. Wait, audio settings. I don't know where my audio settings are. So the little up arrow next to the microphone, next to the muting microphone. So mm -hmm. not, not in the video, but you mean in Zoom, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, in Zoom at okay. the bottom. Yep, yeah, there you go. Oh, you're already up there already. Yeah, bring your microphone. This one? Yep. Okay. Why is this going up? It's not going up. Hmm. Oh, because you have automatically adjust. So unclick that. Look, we learn everything in this session. Okay, I'm sorry. No, it's good. Oh, yeah, I don't hear this a lot. All right, okay, no. tell me if you can hear it. Okay. Can you hear it? No. I feel like maybe I need to mute. V 
The other thing you can do is in the sharing bar at the top in Zoom, um, the three dots on the side, if you click on that, there's a drop down menu and one of them says like optimize for video. Try that. Hey, your practical oh. dietitian, Elisa Bremner. Now I hear it. Hello again, and welcome back to another edition of QED with me, your practical dietitian, Elisa Bremner. Would you like to get dinner on the table in under 15 minutes? Today's episode will give you a delicious idea. If you've been paying attention, you know of two easy ways to ensure your plate is healthy. Make half your plate vegetables and eat the rainbow. That is, make sure you're eating fruits and vegetables of all colors. Today's recipe is a chance to make most of your plate vegetables and a colorful feast for the eyes too. This is my favorite, quickest, easiest vegetarian recipe. You only need four ingredients, or five if you include water. Sweet potatoes, fresh kale, or any leafy green, black beans, and hummus. First, prick sweet potatoes all over with a fork. Skip this step and you risk a sweet potato explosion in your microwave. Unfortunately, I speak from experience. Wrap the potato in a damp, clean towel and microwave until cooked through. You can tell the sweet potato is ready if you can squeeze it gently with your hand. Just be careful, it will be hot. Wash the kale and drain in a colander. Prep it by removing the woody stem and chopping or ripping it roughly. Cook it in a saucepan with a lid until bright green and wilted. Add the beans and heat it through. Meanwhile, mix the hummus and two tablespoons water in a small dish. Now you're ready for assembly. Split the sweet potato open and top with the kale and bean mixture. Drizzle the dressing over the stuffed sweet potato and you're done. Thanks to Barbara for letting me take photos of your cooking. Sweet potatoes are all the rage these days and personally, I love them in all forms. But the lowly white potato has gotten a bad rap. Which one do you think is best? Well, sweet potato is a better source of fiber, vitamin A, and vitamin C. But the white potato has the sweet beet on iron and potassium, and something called resistant starch, which is good for our digestive health. Both contain good amounts of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. So maybe the answer is not or, but rather and. All types of potatoes fill us up with not too many calories, unless you deep fry them, of course. Variety is the spice of life and important for good health. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. And that was very fun indeed. So you're using minimal amount of ingredients and Elisa, I'm thinking, you know, when you shared the recipe with me earlier, we were thinking, okay, how does this fit my plate? But I think it actually does. So sweet potato and kale are vegetables. Then you have the grains, which are the beans, and you have hummus, which could pass for protein, no? You're on mute. Sorry. Um, yes. Um, actually, technically, uh, it's only three food groups because the beans and the hummus are both really protein. Um, but in a loose sense, because the, the sweet potato, even though it's a vegetable, kind of serves as the starch of the meal, um, that, you know, it's kind of a complete meal. And we talked about adding another food group, I know, because I was really trying to make the challenge by adding olives, which is, of course, a fruit. So um, my, my goal is typically to get at least three food groups in a meal. So, you know, we're and, good. You know, the beauty of this is that how delicious to be able to just eat a sweet potato. I love sweet potatoes as a whole meal. Like you, you know, I feel like a lot of people need to have a plate full of food to feel satisfied. This is the smaller. So in case people are wondering, like, is this really a meal? It looks more like a snack. 
what do you think in terms of are you going to be satisfied eating this first first of all as we know sweet potatoes come in all different sizes from the little mm -hmm. teeny to like you know the size of your face basically um obviously that's a little too much but i think you know pers on a personal level i've actually been transitioning to vegan i'm about 90 percent vegan and I'm always amazed at how filling this stuff is because you're getting all that fiber from the kale and you're getting the protein and the fiber from the beans and it really is like super filling. So yeah, it's a meal. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you and I see Jana nodding as well. Like it's true. It's like we can't get full of meals like this. Okay. Um, Elisa, that's not your only recipe though, right? What other tips do you have for us to be able to cook quick meals? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> if anyone's interested, all of my, all of, I've made 41 videos now. I'm, I'm done with that series, but it's called QED, Quick, Easy, Delicious. Um, so there's at least 40 other recipes available on the ARC website that if you go in under like resources you can find them that's available to anyone um and if if you want a specific link i can i can send that to you for that um but everything pretty much is designed to be you know healthy balanced and quick and easy and delicious of course <laughs> yeah, no that's great now tell us a little bit about the hummus that you use. Was that homemade or it's just like I can go to the supermarket and just get whichever brand and do it? That that was actually homemade hummus. But I I mean I buy supermarket hummus too. But I love hummus because I have like a secret shortcut for hummus that you only need one ingredient. One. The chickpeas. A can of, a can of chickpeas. You th you drain it, but you save the juice. You drain it, you throw it in a blender, and then you add a little bit of the juice, and it basically makes hummus. I mean, obviously, real hummus has other things in it, tahini and, and lemon juice and garlic and things like that. But if you have nothing in your house except for a can of chickpeas, you can make hummus. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good to know. Okay. Mine doesn't never taste really good but i'm gonna try with the juice see if that makes it better i'll okay. give you some recipes if you were gonna put something on the side of the sweet potato what would that be oh i don't know salad <laughs> like more vegetables right that's what i was thinking more vegetables or if you really stuck on getting that grain group in you could you know put some quinoa or some couscous or something like that mm -hmm. um a piece of whole wheat sourdough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever you want. That's a good idea. Or even on top of it, right? I was thinking maybe a little pin on top, something like uh -huh. that. No, right, you could mix that out. in with the beans and the greens. Yeah. yeah. God, you guys are bad. Look at the time. I haven't had lunch yet. All right. Yeah, I actually have to run anyway because we're we're about to get cooking. Okay, so thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today. I hope our attendees had fun. And again, I'm going to be sharing the link later. And uh, if there is any information that you want me to share with our attendees, and remember, people actually go to our YouTube channel. People register, not everybody gets to join because it's kind of a weird time, but they do look in our channel for the recordings. So hopefully, you know. Everyone can see what you did. It's amazing. Made me hungry. I hope our attendees have time for lunch as well. And so do you. Thank you. And I will see you again. I'm sure of that. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Have a good day. Rest Bye. of the week and a nice holiday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.